Let's take a look at a beer-based board game, Unlabeled, the Blind Beer Tasting Game. Unlabeled, the Blind Beer Tasting Game was designed and self-published by Nathan Strappa. The design work is uncredited. As far as I know, it was also done by Nathan, but I'm not positive on that. This was originally launched on Kickstarter in June of 2017, and I got my copy, uh, which I did back to Kickstarter in January of 2018, unfortunately just a bit late for our Gaming in the New Year party that year. Back then, the tabletop bellhop didn't exist, and if Twitch existed, we didn't know about it, so there's no unboxing for us to share with you on mm. this one. It also, this is not a review copy or sponsored in any way. No, as I said, I backed this one on Kickstarter. I was excited to see it, to be honest. Um, Unlabeled itself comes in a small square thin box that doesn't have a lot in it. Uh, there's a main playing board, some wooden barrels and cubes and six different playing colors, the instructions and a pad of flight sheets, which actually you only use if you're playing the game well at a bar. So how does a group play this beer, ta beer tasting board game? All right, really simple. To play a game of Unlabeled, according to the rules, everyone shows up with two beers. I would do that however you want everyone shows up with two beers the identity of the beers have to be remained hidden from the other players so you bring your two you don't let anyone know what you brought each round one player is going to be the beer host and pours each player a taster of one of their two beers now this is actually the trickiest part of the game i would suggest picking up some drink cozies or other form of sleeves to help manage the information mm. despite the name peeling off the labels is not a good solution yeah, what we usually do is we actually just pour the drinks in the in the laundry room into appropriate glassware and bring out the glassware. Uh, the suggestion they say is to pour everything into a pitcher, but like I don't, I'm not I'm, I'm a beer fan. I don't have a beer pitcher at home, but <laughs> fair enough if you've got one. Uh, players each taste their beer. Drinking it is optional. Then look at the board, the unlabeled board, and it's a it's a big square with a bunch of different things on it, uh, different places you can put your barrels, and you place a bet on what you think you know about the beer. Now, there are four scare scoring areas on the board, and each is kind of leveled. They're tiered where they require players to be more accurate, awarding more points if correct. So for one point, this is down the side of the board, is the alcohol percentage. And on the opposite side of the board is the fermentation type. You pick one of those. If you're like, all right, it's top fermented. It's a lager or it's an ale or it's something else. Or two points, uh, uh, or, sorry, the alcohol percentage is the other one. Next is two points for the beer category. These are things like stouts or wheat beer or pale ales. Under each category are going to be a number of different beer types that are more specific. So it's not just a pale ale, it's a cream ale, or it's not just a stout, it's an oatmeal stout, or it's not just a wheat beer, it's a whipped beer. Finally, right in the middle of the board is a big spot for guessing the exact beer. You know you happen to be drinking a Roche Fort 10, you put your barrel there. Players place their bets using the co their colored barrels. After everyone's placed them, uh, points are awarded. Players correct, they get full points for the area they placed it in. So one through five points. Now, if a player did have the wrong beer style, but you're in the right category. So if you manage to guess, um, you guess cream ale, but it's not a cream ale, but it's still a pale ale, you still get one point. All other players score zero points. Points are tracked on the side of the board using the colored wooden cubes. Gabe continues with the host rotating each round until you've tasted all the beers. That's pretty much it for the basic game. Pretty straightforward, as long as you know what all those categories mean. Yeah, true enough. Now, the rules do present some alternatives, uh, like playing at a bar, where you hand the server one of these flight sheets, and they write down which beers are which, but don't reveal that to the players until everyone's completed. The cool part about that is everyone gets to play at once. You don't have to have a host. But you are asking your server to do a little bit more work, so please tip well if you do do this. There are also rules for using tasting sheets while playing. Now, these have to be downloaded online. What these let you do is write down all the different categories and all the different things for the one beer, and then award points for each section on the board you get correct. Now, this is how um, I prefer to play the game. I like guessing on more than just one thing. Now, for true beer snobs, there is the elimination mode, where the first round, you're just going to bet on the one-point areas. Then you start the second round, and you're going to bet on the two-point areas. Then you're going to get to the third round, where you bet on the three-point areas. And finally, if you get to the fourth round, you got to nail the right beer. And if at any point, if you get anything wrong, you're eliminated from the game. Though I think connoisseur is the preferred term, yeah. even if snob might be in some cases more appropriate. See, I find that we're connoisseurs of the real beer snobs, and the ones who just kind of casually like drinking beer just go by beer snob. But I don't know if that's a firm classification. I, I call myself a beer snob, and I don't even know what I'm talking about half the time. 
Now, as for my thoughts on this game, right from the start, when I backed the Kickstarter, I just expected a bit more than I got um, with Unlabeled. I just thought, like, to be honest, it's exactly what I was expecting. It's a game about rating beers, but somehow it's just not quite what I wanted. Now, I've had fun playing it, and to be honest, if I'm home and I'm going to be rating beers, I might as well bring the game out. If we're going to be rating beers anyway, we might as well play some Unlabeled while we're doing it and gamify it. It's definitely more than an activity of a game. You're, there's no strategy here. There's no planning. There's no, th this is all about the experience. This is something you do while hanging out with friends, tasting beers. It's something to enhance a gathering, not something that should be the focus of the evening. Like if I get my friends together and we're going to hang out and have some beers, I'm going to bring untapped. If I, I, this hasn't happened yet, but the Charles Frank calls me up and says, let's review some beers. Next time I go to his house, I'm bringing untapped just to add that extra level, but I'm never going to call people up and be like, Hey, let's get together and play untapped this weekend. Unlabeled. Sorry. I'm saying untapped. That's a beer app. I'm going to get together and play unlabeled this weekend. It's, I'm not going to have an unlabeled game night. This is something I'm going to add to a drinking night or maybe something if I do, as we talked about earlier in the show tonight on the full tabletop bellhop gaming podcast is that if I'm going to have a night with drinks, this might be something I toss out during the night. I found the default rules rather uninteresting. The whole one bet, the fact you get one chance, like it's, it's complete pusher luck. It's, it's, you're getting one, it, it's complete gambling. It's just limiting. Uh, for one, it's all or nothing, right? Like you either get your points or you don't. Um, even if you know the right beer type, you're, you're just, it encourages players to play conservatively. Like, oh, I'm going to be able to guess, especially lager or ale is pretty easy to guess for most drinks out there, most beers. You can get the the hop level uh, pretty easily. So not the hop level, the fermentation type pretty easily. And just guessing on that gives you a good 50-50 chance of getting a point. Whereas trying to guess the exact beer, like you got to be like, unless you happen to have some subset and know what's in your friend's fridge before the night starts, like there's just too many beers out there to ever get that. So what we prefer to do is to use the optional rules for full tasting. I want to guess what that beer is, but I don't want to be penalized for being wrong. Whereas I want to get points for what I get right. The problem with this is the tools to actually play that way aren't included in the box. This was something added to the campaign, actually as part of the Kickstarter due to feedback from people like me who suggested that that would be more fun. And it was more like they added it as an afterthought. Yeah, it's unfortunate that uh, even though it was added in the Kickstarter, that it wasn't incorporated into what was uh, what was sent out. Yeah, like it's it's listed there and you can go online and download a sheet, but even the sheet doesn't have all the information. So what we did is we house ruled it, right? I normally on Tabletop Bellhop, we are very much advocate of playing by the rules as written. But as I said, this is more of an activity than a game. No one really cares about the score at the end of the game. We just want to have as much fun as possible. So one of the ways we do this is we let each player go one at a time and we give them multiple barrels. So when playing two player, I just let Deanna use all the barrels and then she lets me use all the barrels. If you're playing with more people, you're going to need to grab something else. That's easy enough to do. Grab whatever, any components, use meeples, use coins, whatever it is, and then reward points for every category. So when you place your bet, you're going to bet on everything. You're going to bet on the fermentation type. You're going to bet on the alcohol value. You're going to bet on the characteristic. You're going to bet on the type and you're going to bet on the final beer. And for each one you got right, you get points. Once you start giving points for every category, I found the game much more fun and engaging. It's still not quite the game you want, though. No, it's not, though, because even doing this, we still found it could use some more work. The biggest omission to me, and this is a huge one, is that there's no way to bet on IBUs, which are international bitterness units. IBUs are huge as far as beer tasting is concerned. Every beer you can buy now lists the IBUs on the can or bottle. This is if you go to a brew pub, you're going to have a list of beers. It's going to have the names. It's going to have the alcohol percentage and the IBUs. Like it's a huge number as far as beer tasting is concerned with craft beers. And it's so weird. This game doesn't have it. Like I, I don't care if it's a ale or a lager. That's pretty easy to guess. But the IBUs, I should be definitely getting on guessing that. So here again, we have house rules. So what we do when we play is we use the score track. And the score track just 1 to 20. So what we do is we make those 10s. So if you put a two on the track, that means you're guessing an IBU of 11 to 20. Whereas if you put it on the six, you're guessing IBUs of 51 to 60 IBUs. So this is where I, as someone who generally just drank a Stella or a Guinness, <laughs> is as lost as if you were explaining Thaco to a toddler. 
Uh, fair enough. So you wouldn't bet very well on the IBUs. If you're playing by the Bane rules, you just skip that part of the board. And if you're playing with our rules, you just don't expect to get any points there. But after playing a few times, you're probably going to get better at it, which is actually what I found Unlabeled really good for, was getting better at rating beers, which is kind of, in a way, the goal of the game, which is cool. Now, there is one other issue, and, it, and to me, it's a pretty big one, and that's the list of categories and types. It just seems to be lacking. Every time we have sat down to play, we have found at least one beer, usually two, during the night that we can't categorize based on the options on the game board. Like, there is no chocolate or milk stout, and those are two of my favorite styles that we can get here locally in Windsor all over the place. Almost every brewery offers one or the other, if not both. And because of that, I just kind of wonder where they got their list of categories. Like, did they not go on a site like Rate Beer or Untapped or any of the popular beer reviewing sites to get their list of categories? I don't know where they got it from. Now, despite all these flaws, I gotta say, we've had fun playing this game uh, as part of a get together. Like, even the basic rules add something to a night of tasting beers. I like games. So, by adding that little bit of gamification, I enjoy that. If nothing else, it's great for getting everyone's attention and focused on it, right? Sitting at the table instead of just kind of wandering around drinking their own drinks and doing their own thing, this gets everyone together and talking about it. Like, oh, what'd you taste in that beer? What'd you think it? Well, why'd you think that was a pale ale? What about that? Like you get that conversation going, which I dig. Plus I do like the fact that again, it can help enhance your knowledge of beers, especially for someone who hasn't before. And when they're like, oh, that's definitely a pale ale. Like, oh, it's not a pale ale. And you're like, why? Why is that not a pale ale? What should I have guessed, right? And you have those conversations. What I did, while I wanted more from it, we did find ones to make it more fun. Uh, I would have liked that some of these house rules were in the game by default. If you're going to have the tasting rule be an optional thing, don't send someone to a website to print something off. This is a drinking game. You got beers out on the table. Who's going to go up to their computer and go print something? Like, I get it. I guess if you prepare ahead of time, you can have them. If you're a beer fan and no other beer fans, just I, I actually strongly suggest picking this up. It, it's a great addition to a tasting night. If that's something you do, if you get together with your friends and taste beers, get a copy of Unlabeled. It may not be perfect, but it's just kind of neat to, to a way to enhance the night. Now, I do suggest you consider some of the house rules we've tried to make the game a little bit more fun. Well, for a slightly more in-depth look at Unlabeled, you can head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Reviews.